Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So Apple just surprised us with the announcement of what they're calling a scary fast event on October 30th. We don't really know what it's going to be about, but since someone might have leaked a picture of a new MacBook Pro box, we're pretty sure it's gonna be a new MacBook Pro, but the real question is why is it scary fast? Does this mean that they're going to release a new M3 Apple Silicon? Maybe just one version of it, be it the M3, the M3 Pro or the M3 Max? Are they maybe releasing a new uh, AI coprocessor that's been rumored from Apple as well? Let's get into it. So earlier this week, Apple announced this scary fast event. So the question is, what are they talking about? Um, it, will it be scary fast? So Mac Rumors has a pretty interesting write up here. So it's been a while since we've seen an update for the MacBook Pro. Uh, it's actually been almost three years since the iMac has been updated. And the new M2 Pro in the Mac Pro has been great, but it's been just about uh, six to eight months since that's come out. And we know that they probably would have liked to have had M3 in place then. And we know that at this point from TSMC, that three nanometer is well on its way. And if they're already announcing new MacBooks, it's likely that um, that three nanometer TSMC process is good to go. We also know that a lot of the most popular and most importantly, most powerful specs of the M2 uh, be it with MacBooks or the Mac Pro, um, are actually running thin in Apple stores. If you go and try to buy one nowadays, a lot of them will say we just don't have them or it could be months before we could even ship it to you, which is kind of interesting. And most of this news comes from uh, Ming-Chi Kuo, and he's done a lot of uh, research and has called a lot of Apple releases in the past. Uh, what's interesting is they'd likely, you know, wouldn't announce something that they would ship immediately, but they would likely be at least able to ship uh, limited quantities of their new models by Q4. And there've also been rumors that Apple's been testing the M3 internally already, both on MacBook Pro and the Mac Pro. But however, um, previously we thought that it would be probably up until early 2024 that Apple would announce refreshes for the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. And this is all very interesting, uh, but we know a fair bit about the M3. Uh, the specs have not likely changed very much. Uh, most of the updates have been whether or not Apple can actually produce it or not. And what I really want to talk about is what the M3 will potentially enable in terms of AI. Because obviously M2 is an incredible processor for AI. And actually early on was one of the first non-NVIDIA GPU just processing units that could run Falcon 40B and Falcon 70B uh, nearly natively. Of course you can run it on other CPUs, but uh, the Apple Silicon was able to do this much faster, predominantly because of how it accesses memory, which is pretty complex, but you should go watch a video on that if you want to learn more about that. So what we know right now is that the M3 will still be lined up pretty similarly to the M2. So it'll be an M3 Pro, an M3 Max, and an M3 Ultra. Then they're likely going to see the standard M3 first. So I don't think we'll see an M3 Ultra on October 30th but I would bet we'll see at least the M3 Pro and the M3 Max. We also know that similar to the M2 chip, the M3 will likely have an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU. But we don't really know what the improvements could look like uh, when we see the Ultra variant. Um, we could see something um, probably between a 32 core CPU and up to an 80 core GPU. And in terms of where they interlace those neural compute cores, that'll also be very interesting. The biggest question is how much RAM they'll have. Because uh, right now, the biggest advantage for these Apple Silicon devices, uh, especially what we saw in the iPhone and the Apple Watch, is the memory associated with these neural compute cores and the GPU cores. Um, the importance here is that's just how much of a model you can fit on the actual processor. And the other thing that might be interesting is if we see some really advanced uh, interconnects included in these new MacBooks. And one of these brand new interfaces could be something called CXL, which we've seen in other super high-end laptops before. What's crazy is these devices can push up to 3.9 gigs per second on the low end and on the high end as high as over 120 gigabytes per second. So this is actually you know, more than fast enough for uh, an external GPU. It's more than fast enough to actually have uh, RAM uh, inter interfacing with the CPU directly. And what's kind of cool is this might actually be one of the ideal interfaces to interface with external HBM and more importantly interface with uh, sort of an external LLM coprocessor that Apple has been rumored to work on. What's interesting is this device may be somewhere between uh, a GPU, an MPU, or a TPU, maybe uh, like an Apple native TPU. 
And there's a question of if, if Apple will eventually potentially start providing this as a service specifically for iOS devices. Uh, although iOS devices and Macs by at large have the best platform for running AI in total. Different than a lot of Google's nomenclature where for instance, like the pixels that boast all of this crazy AI stuff, What's interesting is most of that is actually being offloaded onto Google servers. It's not really happening on device, even though they have some basic, very, very um, cut down TPUs on uh, Android devices made by Google at this point. And I think this is a great segue into what Apple has also been working on. Uh, unfortunately, kind of playing catch up, which basically is Apple's plans to come full circle with generative AI on all its devices. So obviously Apple at this point is behind in terms of what uh, Google has been doing with BARD and some of their projects and with more importantly what Microsoft has been doing with OpenAI. And they're making note of this because they're spending at this point up to a billion dollars a year on improving Siri and actually creating um, a new model that they're probably going to debut as Apple GPT. They were pretty early with Siri and when I was in college I actually worked with a number of researchers from MIT CCL who then went on to work at Siri. So to say that smart people weren't working at Apple is inaccurate but they just didn't hit it first. And now that we know um, GPTs and transformers are kind of the new lay of the land, Apple is trying to play, play catch up as fast as possible. And what's really cool is Apple, in a very Apple way, has actually solved the hardware part of this first. They've already seemingly by accident, but it, knowing Apple, it's not an accident, have created a uh, completely homogeneous set of devices going from Apple Watches to um, iPhones, to Macs, to uh, basically desktops and servers that are highly capable of running AI all on a single platform. So this is GGML and then a few other um, platforms that Apple has internally. And it's really, really cool because now they just have to round out the software part. And with proprietary Apple software, I think this could be just the, an incredible mating of this technology. And if Apple gets this right, they will undoubtedly be first. I mean, the ChatGPT integration on iOS devices is quite good. But imagine having that be kind of a, nat a native Apple product that is deployed in a very Apple way. I think that would be completely incredible. And Tim Cook has been talking about this already. He's pretty much said that Apple has been working on generative AI for years, but um, they've been pretty spotty on details. And, um, you know, they've basically, and earlier in July, they actually announced that they had built their own large language model called Ajax and uh, used this to round out an internal chatbot called Apple GPT. And the next real question is releasing some of this and then seeing how it competes with Google and Microsoft's AIs. Obviously, Apple has tons of data to use with this. They have near, arguably maybe as much data as uh, Google has with their customers. Uh, and I think one advantage Apple has here is that people trust Apple more. Um, even if you don't really believe it, Apple does, generally speaking, have better privacy practices in all of their software um, than Microsoft or Google does. And even if that doesn't come, you know, maybe as far as some would like, I think the idea that you can trust AI from a company like Apple um, probably rings more true with most people than people who use Windows or kind of Google software. And what's also really cool, and this has not been really reported on very much at all, Apple software engineering teams are also looking at integrating generative AI into development tools like Xcode. And this is something that we haven't really seen from Google or Microsoft. We've seen it from Microsoft with things like uh, integrations of OpenAI in Microsoft um, like 365, so like their Office suite. But um, the idea of using this to create like an Apple specific version of GitHub Copilot um, with the ability to leverage internal developers at Apple to basically supercharge iOS development, I think is incredibly cool. In software engineering, this is something we call dog fooding. So it's basically when you create a tool, you introduce it to your own employees, and then it actually creates this sort of feedback loop that is positive and scaling almost, you know, exponentially. So the idea is, you know, we, we can make everyone get better at making iOS apps faster than any other platform. And the more people buying iOS apps, the best, you know, that's better for Apple. And supposedly the idea here is to get as many AI apps out in the, into the Apple App Store as possible. Um, they're also exploring new features for Apple Music, including auto-generated playlists. And some of this starts to key into areas where they'd like to actually compete with Spotify. And Apple also wants to integrate AI into their Office suites. I'm not sure how many people use their Office suites, but uh, integrating into pages and sheets is also something they're very, very interested in doing. And one thing I like about this is, you know, Apple, they're, they're, they're first with hardware commonly. 
but I think they're really going to nail this because with VR, they were you know, a number of years late. So they weren't the first, but they released very well-engineered and polished products. And they won't release something if they think it's really, really good. Different than Google and Microsoft, but I think um, this could be something really, really incredible. So we'll have to wait and see uh, until what happens on October 30th. Uh, I'll be doing a live stream and uh, including my reaction to what's going on there. Uh, I think this is going to be really, really cool. I'm excited for at least the first inclination of M3. We're not going to see M3 Ultra more than likely, but I think this could be really, really cool. And just to see what the next step of M3 is in terms of doing AI on Apple devices, I think will be incredible. So. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like our content, please like and subscribe. And I hope you learned something. So we'll see you in the next video.